people are calling me slay queens. No, people started telling me things. Oh, Pauline, you're slaying. You just got married you, and you're slaying here. Why don't you give your husband a kid or he's going to leave you? So many people told me so many things. So for me, I would, I would tell him, you know what, babe, because I can't get a baby. If you get a chance of having a baby outside, bring it. I'll take care. I'm, like, I'm done, done. If you feel that you're tired with me, you don't want to have me anymore, like you don't want to do anything with me, just use protection so that you don't become sick. It got to a point when the doctor told us now, on this day, at this particular time, mm -hmm. start doing it. So we were scheduled on a sex schedule. You are given a schedule whereby yeah. when she knows she's right. Like when I know I'm ovulating. into her. <laughs> whether, <laughs> whether I'm in the mood or not. I'm very close with the mom. By this time we are talking like on daily basis. We are good friends. So to a point, my mother-in-law asking me, oh, you guys don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know that's coming from a mother-in-law is like... Are you trying to, to say I'm underperforming? Yeah, because I remember my mom was asking, are you guys doing it right? Do you know how to do it? And we were like, and all you know with fibroids and endometriosis, your stomach becomes big. So people be, oh, congratulations, you're pregnant. And I'm like, I know, I'm happy. So I'll dance, but deep down in my heart, I know I'm not pregnant, you know. This is an extraordinary story of love. Pauline and Mokazi met for the first time on a Saturday afternoon, and by evening that same day, they were husband and wife. Talk about lens. Those of you who have been dating for the last 10 years, well, I'm not inciting anyone, but hopefully you pick something, a tip or two from this unique couple. And of course, before too long, Pauline and Mokazi would realize that not everything happens at their speed. Days turned into months and months into years, and a wave of frustration swept over their marriage as their efforts to conceive went in vain. This really took a toll on their relationship, threatening to derail the very love that initially brought them together. But through it all, they held on to the unwavering belief that someday their prayers will be heard. Before we listen in, let me welcome you to Shared Moments with Justice, your home for inspiring and life-changing stories. As usual, if you find this content useful, please subscribe and share with a friend. Remember, you can support this channel by joining my channel membership where you can make a monthly contribution or simply make a one-time donation through PayPal or M-Pesa. All the details will be provided in the description. Now, let me welcome Pauline and Mokazi. I was single for some time. Having come from um, my previous relationship that couldn't work, so I was single for some time. I have a client who introduced me to Tinder and didn't know what Tinder was. So I went, checked what Tinder is. And the rule of the thumb was, if you see someone's profile, you like it, swipe right. If you don't like it, swipe left. So I was there, busy, looking at the profile, mm, yeah, swiping right. Right, 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 left, right, left, right, left. On the other side, she's doing the same. Uh, I'm trying to explain how Tinder works. She's doing the same. She looks at my profile plus others, so it's either a right swipe or a left swipe. Until if I swipe right, and on the other side, she meets my pro profile and swipes right, we match. So what Tinder does, it initiates a conversation. Hi. Like it's me saying hi to her, yet it's not me. So hi, then from her side, hi. So initiating like a conversation. So I was like, hi, hi. That was on Wednesday. Nothing much. On Thursday, again, hi, hi. On Friday, now that's when we strike a conversation. We started talking, asking her, uh, who are you? Tell me about yourself. And I insisted to have her number. Because I wasn't like comfortable to to talk through the app. Immediately I said no, because I don't share my number with people. You know, okay, I've been in Tinder for long than him. And I, coming from a broken or a bad relationship, Tinder was a, just a, a place to have fun. Interact with people and just know people. My backstory about this was before I met my ex, 
husband, let me say so, before meeting my ex-husband, I'm that young, naive girl from college. You seeing people having uh, white guys and you think, oh, I also want a boyfriend who is white. I also want to have a boyfriend who has money and stuff and stuff. Because in my circle of friends, all my friends were married by white. And so me being there, I was like, hmm, I'd love to try. But for me, I didn't know what kind of, how I could approach or get a white person. So for me, I was in Afro intro, all those Tinder space and tango. Yeah, I was all in all those spaces. But now I met a, a guy who loved me, not from Tinder, but a white guy who met me when I was doing my modeling because I was a model. So we just met at Nairobi when I was showcasing cars. And uh, we fell in love and we became partners and things started happening. So when we had... Uh, he started having issues, the girl was toxic, his parents were, his parents were trying to control him through me and I felt I can't manage this, it's not good for me. And I felt like this guy is not going to change anymore, so why not just try cut lines, I be my own, he be his own, and then life continues. So I had to go back to Tinder, but this time around I'm not going to Tinder to look for a boyfriend or to look for someone, but just to network and grow myself. And in particular, I was looking for business people, a person that we can talk, a person who has a business so that I can tap that mind and become a business person. So she refused to give me the number and ask for my number instead. She's like, no, you give me yours, I'll call you. And you know, you've been to interviews where they tell you, don't call us, we'll call you. You know it's a straight no, but nevertheless, I gave her my number. Okay, me feeling like giving him my number was like, I'm too easy. And I just want to be like, go back to that thing I was in, in a bad space. Huh? So I wanted to be the real me. I wanted to change my me and be someone else who is different. Huh? And get what I want, not what he wants or something, you know. And at this point, I didn't want anything to do with relationship because I was so tired. And I just wanted to be me. So I wanted to interact with anyone and everyone. So by Mokazi asking for my number, I was like, this guy is stubborn already. He's already asking for my number. He's asking me too many questions. What's your favorite color? What do you love eating? What? So many things. And I was like, he's not my type. And in fact, mm -hmm. checking his profile, that short guy. And I was like, mm, not my type. <laughs> not my type. Yeah, so I didn't like it. Short in structure, but tall in power. Wide with vision, but narrow in purpose. That's why you are here. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. Uh, she didn't, she, yeah, she asked for my number. I gave her my number. Remember on Wednesday, it was hi, hi, but not us. Thursday, it was now me saying hi and her replying hi. Now on, on Fridays, when now we are conversing, having a conversation. What's your color? By your color, of course, there's what I was looking for. We call it the magic of thinking big, eh? psycho -cybernetics. I'll ask you a question, how you respond, I'll get so much out of that. Yeah, your personality, what you like, what you don't like. Yeah, so I gave you my number and this Friday, I kept on pestering her from morning. Have you eaten? What are you doing? Uh, you know. When you ask like 10 questions and you're only given one answer, you know, you get tired. But now, at around 5, was it 5, she called me. By then I was from work, so I was just like packing. So I was like, uh, give me a moment. I'll, you know, men, we can't multitask. Reversing the car from a call that you actually, you know, you've been expecting this call and you're here reversing. I can easily, you know, get into someone's house. So uh, she's like, yeah, fine. One thing I knew for, for a fact, now I have her number. I am now in control. So I called her. I'm like, uh, yeah, we spoke, we chatted a bit. Then I requested her for a lunch on Saturday, the following day. Remember, we are talking on Friday. I'm requesting her for lunch on Saturday. So many times she kept on saying no. And I kept on insisting, like you, you said, I'm stubborn. So I insisted, I insisted, until she allowed me to have lunch with her. So I, get to, I got to know 
her work schedule what time she leaves work around 12:45 so I knew 12.45, I'll be there waiting. And there I was on Saturday. Of course, I, I knew her because of the height. I, she was a model, so she was wearing a long Ankara dress. And I was like, this is the woman I want to settle down with. Immediately. Yeah, so when she came, I was, where was I? Mokazi had one tracksuit. But the thing that made Mokazi made me get to his trap, he lied to me he's a custodian. Okay, he is a custodian. He lied he know how to cook pilau. So I was like, mm. So when he asked for the lunch date, me and you I'm going to eat pilau because I love pilau. Only for me to be surprised, we're not going to eat the pilau that he said he knows how to cook the pilau. Mm -hmm. So when I met him, he just pecked me and I was like, oh, the first day even don't know you're already pecking this young girl. Mm -hmm. So we, I got the car and we drove off to his house. Yet I had another guy who was still the same same day. I had another date, another guy at uh, Sankara. So I was the one who comes first or the one who calls first. That's where I'll go. So Mokazi was that kind of, um, what can I say in Swahili? Can I say kihere here kind of guy? He came and picked me up and I was like, I can't breathe. But just because he showed up, let me just go. So I don't want to frustrate him. But you see, okay, who do you choose? A person who is coming for you or a person who is telling you, meet me at Sankara? One was business-minded. The other one was... Who was business-minded? Me. The Sankara Thank guy. <laughs> now, so on our way, I requested her, okay, I'm just from a client. Okay, of, of course you saw me on tracksuit. Yeah. I'm from a client. Please allow me to go home. I change so that I take you for lunch. She agreed. So we went home. On our way, we were having a healthy conversation. And everything in that conversation to me was just a tick, a tick, a tick. By the time, oh, I used a long route. Long route such that the first place was to pass through uh, Lovington so as you can breathe the air of, you know, where the rich hide their money. Went into some shoddy, shoddy, dingy places and she found herself in Kawangware. Of course, the air changed. Did you notice <laughs> the air changing? So she was in Kawangware. Uh, I went upstairs, I was to drop some things I had bought. She helped me carry some to my door. I gave you the keys and you opened the door. Yeah. So Mokazi asked me, can you help me open the door? So I took the key and opened the door. The first thing he told me, this is your house. And I was like, this is your house. So I got in the house, but where I sat, I just put my shoes just next to the seat. And I was sitting at the corner of the seat in case of anything happening, I'm lost. So Mokazi was not that kind of a guy. So he got to the kitchen, served me some juice, and he went on to change. So I tensed down and I was so calm, like waiting. But I was conversing with my friend, telling her where I am, the name of the guy I'm with, and the number. And I gave the location where I am. In case of anything that happens, they know where to find me. Last scene. Yeah. He made a mistake and took me to the kitchen. The guy said he knows how to cook pilau. I found a, a saucepan that was there covered and it had food. Cooked pilau. It was a mixture of viazi, the potatoes, tomatoes and rice. It was looking horrible. That particular so day I, I, that was to a change, <laughs> I decided to change my way of cooking. And this, uh, pilau njeri is also part of pilau. You know, you can have rice and you decide to, you know, Make it uh, coconut rice, pilau, or... <laughs> <laughs> Mokazi was a terrible thing by then. But anyway, because of his stories and the way he was talking to me, I just became comfortable. I didn't have to tense about the pilau thing or something. But I knew at the end of the day I'm going home. So as we were chatting with Mokazi, he didn't serve me food, he just gave me the juice. He told me stories and we were about to leave and go for lunch if you're going for lunch. So we took the Volvo and we went to one hotel called, is it a hotel? Impala. Impala. Mm. So Mwakazi had told me about lunch in Impala. So in my mind, I was thinking, oh, we're going to Impala. I have to counter check and know where this Impala is. So at the back of my mind, I knew Impala is a hotel. So I searched Impala and an Impala I was getting was in Gaira, a very, very like weird Impala. And now having that like, um 
pride thing in me like i was dating amzungo so why should i go to such a dingy place and you know way someone is waiting for you at some time. <laughs> yeah. so i'm like let me just wait and and see where we're going mm -hmm. but it was not impala hotel it was impala club mm -hmm. it was a nice place so we went ate and now this is where mokazi failed me for the very first time in the span of just being together for some hours i felt as if he didn't have time for me when he told me no i've told you everything about me i've told you my story so why don't you tell me about yours so i'm trying to explain myself and he's not even listening to me he was like i want to tell me are you in or out i'm like let me just say I'm in because let me just try it. I said I'm in. Okay, let's do it. And that's how everything started very fast. From Impala Club, uh, we went. I was to take her to Jaffrey, Nairobi Jaffrey's. It's a nice place to walk around. So we could continue our conversation from there. But the dress she was wearing, mm -mm. the shoes she was wearing six inch, you know, like those stiletto. So that place you cannot walk on heeled shoes because of the track around so i requested her we go back home i can give her either my track suit or my open shoes so that we go she agreed went home she changed now when we were leaving i went back in did, did i send you uh, downstairs to the car Mokazi told me wait for me i've forgotten something mm -hmm. i'm coming Mm -hmm. So I was going down because I couldn't go back with him. Mm -hmm. Only for me to, not, I didn't know anything. So Mokazi went back and then he came out. Only for me later to realize when we came back that Mokazi had taken my dress and soaked it in a basin of water that I couldn't go anywhere. So I'm here, I'm skinny. I can't fit in his tracksuit. I, now I looked funny in a very baggy t-shirt, very baggy tracksuit and some open shoes. And I had no any other choice. I couldn't do anything. Because I can't go, how will I even go home? By then, you had said yes, so... Yeah, but I said yes, but not yes to sleep. How can I spend at your place for the first time? To me, I had seen a wife. So what else could I have done? I don't know, okay, I don't know if, if men still do what I did to you. Put clothes in your, you know, in the basin. But anyway, it worked. So, coming back from Jeffrey's, she stayed. She was nice, composed. Wearing my t-shirt, wearing my clothes, she was fine. This is Saturday, the first day we meet face to face. She stayed. On Monday, I met the sister, firstborn. Wednesday, I met the parents, both of them. Friday, the parents invited me for dinner. Of course, trying to, because the picture they had seen on that Wednesday we met was someone who is serious and she, they asked her, are you sure that guy is not married? What was your answer? My mom was saying, have you stolen someone's husband? I'm like, no, mom, he's not married. So who is he? He's, he's my friend. Where did you meet? We went for swimming and we met there. That was a lie. That's a lie that I had to give my mom because I wouldn't say we met online. So my mom knew you and your friend, no, you bringing your friend to meet us, it meant a lot. So my mom liked Mokazi very much. When we went for, the, for dinner with mom, the kind of questions she was throwing at me were very intentional, trying to gauge like what what motives do you have with my daughter? And so me I was frank, we spoke, we spoke. Then I didn't give her like, you know, conclusive like answers, like we had spoken. So I was like, you know, you leave things in suspense. Then yeah, we parted ways, went back home. Now uh I I left. I left, she was left with the parents because we didn't want the parents to know that actually we are going back home together. So the mom, uh, after now meeting and catch up and all that, the mom escorted her to the bus stop that they know where she lives. So they escorted her there. She went into the bus, sat, waited until the parents walk away and they've gone. Came out quickly got into matato to my place and <laughs> i had to go in his house because i was feeling more comfortable there and uh now going back to my place it was like oh okay now this guy's becoming more interesting why don't i just so i just left and go to his place praying that my parents would, would tell me they're coming to my house to stay so when i got home i called them and told them oh i'm home 
I need to take a shower and charge my phone. And that's how I went to Mteja so that they won't call me again until the next day. So I had to call a friend of mine to come and bring me clothes so that I can go to work. By the time, by the time she's coming to my house and to stay in my house, her ex was in her house. So my ex was in the house and um, I just had felt that I'm not doing this anymore with him because the, the way he was taking uh, the alcohol thing, it was like a vampire who had just gotten fresh blood. So even after his parents warned me not to let him drink, I didn't listen to it because these are a European guy. So I want him to have fun in Kenya. So I had to let him, not knowing the repercussions that I'm going to face. So I felt I'm done, done with this guy. So the only thing, when he tried to like push me from the seventh floor, I just reported him to Kasarani police station and that's where our marriage ended. So I had to leave him. So we, we had to be separated, me and him, so that at least that one week where he was to be here in Nairobi goes out and then I have to go back in my house. So I was sleeping at a friend's house and he was in my house, but the guy was trying to make let me understand and forgive him so that we continue with our arrangement. But for me, I tried, I tried to be a difficult person and ignore him. So I just let him do whatever he wants. So the guy started drinking and doing bad things. The more he drinks, the more he's destroying and breaking everything in the house, the more he pushed me away. So I thought, why not settle with a person that can speak with my parents freely, like Swahili, English, or even do things the African way that my parent can understand, that my, my, my grand can interact with my grandmother. Mostly I love my grandmother. So they can interact with my grandmother because my, my grandmother was like, why did you bring for me a cat? I don't want to see a cat because of the blue eyes and everything. So she was not comfortable. So that's why I switched very fast and decided, let me just take him. After a month, is this after a month? After a month, Mokazi engaged me. Yes, and did the, the following week, he did uh, paid dowry. He paid my dowry. Yes. Then life has been okay until now she started falling sick. Then we realized now she has endometriosis. So that opened a different chapter in our life. A chapter of constant, you know, going to hospital. We underwent, she underwent a laparoscopy, a surgical operation, which was very, very expensive. You know, for a person that you've met recently and now you have to incur so much money for her surgical operations and all that because now she had endometriosis. So we had, we did our surgery. First, before doing our surgery, I had these multiple cramps, kind of a fibroid feeling that you don't know what's happening. So we never thought it was serious at first. I never thought it was serious because for me, I took it as a period, just the normal way. And I'm like, I was asking myself so many questions. We're not using protection with these guys. So what's happening? Why am I not getting pregnant? And at the same time, I was so tense. Like, if I get pregnant, is this guy going to be responsible? Or he's going to tell me the pregnancy is not his? So I was so, like, confused on what will happen. But something like having my painful periods, I couldn't enjoy myself with him. I felt everything was just, a, was crashing. And um, not telling him, we need to do something about my periods. He was like, oh, I have a gyna that I know. We can go and check him out. So we went to the gyna, but now the gyna is known by the other lady. So I was not so my comfortable ex. going to the same gyna who helped the other lady give birth. And now you're taking me to the same guy. So I wanted my own space with new things and new person. But we went and I told my mom about it. And my mom was, why don't you try plan B? And I'm like, okay. So we went to Aga Khan and now on the on doing the test and everything, I was told I have endometriosis. So I was told the faster you treat it, the better for you. So coming back to Mwakazi and we were we were with Mwakazi, but now coming back sitting down and discussing how are we going to do this thing? We need medication. So the guy had already like told Mwakazi we have to do a surgery, but I didn't know what was happening. Maybe I was naive. I didn't know that we have to undergo a surgery. So Mokazi told me the only way we're going to do this is a surgery. I've never been to the hospital. I've never thought that I'll ever do such kind of a thing. The only thing I knew was fibroids. 
and cyst but what is this endometriosis that even I have no idea what it was so he mokazi spoke to me and told me you know it let's pray to god that it's going to be successful and you're going to be okay and you'll get your own kids you know like the way she was like okay i'm not getting pregnant so it became like uh you know something that she was like nervous and getting worried of course now having paid dowry and all that we expected she expected to get pregnant remember i have kids from my previous relationship so she wants kids of her own so that's where the stress was coming from and i felt that this guy if i don't get kids of my own how will he view me it will get some point he will get tired of me and maybe he will leave me or maybe he will start not going to look for kids outside so i accepted very fast to go for the endometriosis surgery that is laparoscopy so we did it on 2016 mm-hmm. um 2016 december on 25th so when people are busy partying i'm busy in the theater just being done for some surgeries that i don't know and then it didn't take long we were told it was it's just a simple thing a two hour yeah, thing which hours. took 7 hours mm. for me to be in the theater and um everything went well so i came out but still nothing happened i couldn't get pregnant i mm-hmm. stayed all those months and then now it got to a point where now the doctor told us you people you have to take serious medication so buying the medicine itself for fertility is expensive very expensive like you can be told to buy a certain drug like one drug is like 300 a pill and you need it to take three times a day for a whole month so it became so expensive for us so we could buy the drugs we could manage and buy the drugs but at the same time nothing was happening so we were scheduled on a sex schedule you are given a schedule whereby yeah. when she knows she's right they when i know I'm jump into her <laughs> whether, whether i'm in the mood or not so you can imagine she's ovulating i'm at work so she has to are you coming what time are you coming <laughs> we have to do it you know you have to, you have to do it I mean, i'm like <laughs> anyway so we were told by the by the gainer that we have to do that but now you see i'm at work and mokazi is at work so anytime like how do you even feel it and start calling him you have to go and do it so the gainer decided these two people we need to put them together for the, so that this thing can work so i was told not to go to work for one week No, you know you go to the gyna when you're on your 3 days period for the test and everything so that they can tell you when will you ovulate. So I was told this week don't go to work the whole week and Mokazi don't go to work. Mokazi I don't want you to make Pauline to be mad because once she gets mad everything will <laughs> go bad. And you Pauline don't make Mokazi to be mad because his mm. mood will just mm. go. I want you people you just stay in the house from Monday start doing it. Do you imagine staying with someone doing everything on and you're like even you're not interested and you you have to do it all the time. It got to a point when the doctor told us now on this day at this particular time mm-hmm. start doing it. And we were like I'm tired. No more cuz you're ripping me. I'm tired and I don't want this thing. So I had to let everything go cuz I was seriously tired. What did you think about it? Did you feel it? <laughs> Not really. You see like also me, you know like there's nothing as bad as being told when to do what coming from a man point of view. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> let me say this to a point I'm 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 very close with the mom. By this time we are talking like on daily basis. We are good friends. So to a point my mother-in-law asking me or oh, you guys don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know that coming from a mother in law is like are you trying to, to say I'm underperforming? Yeah, cuz I remember my mom was asking, are you guys doing it right? Do you know how to do it? And then my brother was my elder brother also asked mm-hmm. the same thing. Like mm-hmm. I can come and show you how to do it. <laughs> and we were like yeah, I was like I have I have kids with my ex. So how did they come <laughs> or do I do I have to do DNA so I to you know and anyway, on a lighter note So yeah days went by so we stayed and I told Mokazi I don't want to take these medications anymore because all these medicines are hormones and I'm putting hormones in my body one day they will come and burst out on me and I'll maybe add weight or maybe I'll get pregnant and I'll have like multiple kids so what are we going to do I'm tired I'm not taking this medication again 
from today and I'm not going for any checkups from today. I'm doing nothing. I'm just going to be normal until everything is flushed out of my body. So that's what, what happened. After all those like three, four years of every time to the gainer, every time to the gainer. And, and that is money. And every time to the gainer is around 4,000. Yeah, 4,000. Consultation. Consultation. Yeah. So I felt that was too much for me. Now let me try and relax. No matter how much people tell me, relax, but I'm going to be pregnant. And all you know with fibroids and endometriosis, your stomach becomes big. So people be, oh, congratulations, you're pregnant. And I'm like, I know, I'm happy. So I'll dance. But deep down in my heart, I know I'm not pregnant, you know. So that went like that. And then now, after some time, I started thinking, why, why don't I try again something different? Now, I even now started, started the the western boiled leaves herbs and everything tradition yeah methods it, to a point where a lady another lady told me oh Pauline, I, I know what you can use i know there's a lady a friend of mine i helped my mom helped she had endometriosis in fact for her, she has never even gotten pregnant but when she was given some type of herb she got pregnant it's only 1500 you can afford why can't you pay it you you'll be brought for so i paid the lady and she brought me the herbs but testing the herb to me, it was testing as if I've taken um, water. You see, the way you wash kills, that water, it's not, it's tasteless, it's not bitter, it's not something. But you expect the herbs to be, to be bitter, right? So only for me to realize the lady went to somewhere in Karen, in that forest, and picked some leaves, came, mashed them, and gave me the water to drink. So due to that desperation, Mokazi felt that, why are you doing all this, Joseph? You're hurting yourself. Let God give you the baby on his own time. Just relax and you will have your own baby. But to me, I felt I'm failing. Because most of the people, even my friends, most of my friends, like, we separated. They ran away from me because you got married at first, very fast. Were you desperate? No, you're looking for a kid. They're like, mm, Pauline, you're so desperate. desperate. So all my friends left me. I had no friends. I had nothing. I was just left with my husband. And now being that royal girl to your husband... No, I even decided I'm not going to listen to him anymore. Let me try to do my own way and see if I can have a baby. I was, I was treading very cautiously what I'm saying. Remember, I have two kids. I cannot tell her, relax, babe. I'm not giving you pressure. She'd be like, but you have your kids. I want mine. So I was very, very cautious not to. I was supportive. Like anything she wants us to do, we'll do. We went from doctor to doctor to a point now it became a story of, okay, relax. It's, it seems you never get pregnant. Yeah. So she was told you never get pregnant. You take all your time to take care of his children. So that was the message from one doctor to the other. You never get pregnant because of this. You've tried so much. This will not happen. You relax. Yeah. So... She decided now to go the religious way from one church to the other. And every church she goes, plant a seed. Uh, no, we can see the ex has blocked you from getting pregnant. Uh, the ex, your, he, his ex went so and so places, did so and so, so that you don't get pregnant. So that gospel was repeated over and over again. And we have transversed this country. You are told that there is a, a man of God who prays very well somewhere. We go there. The many times I have driven to so many places, Kakamega, where, because you are following, I didn't go to Shakahola, thank God. So the many places we went, and the men of God, I don't know how, but they are telling me that the, my ex has blocked her. That was shattering. So I was like, it's a done deal. Here we are. Let's just bring up these children and... Basically what happened to me was uh, I felt left alone and I felt as if my world is over because the minute he told me he has kids, I accepted him with his own kids. You see? And now me not having kids, I was like, anytime I go where women are, married women and they have kids, I would feel as if this is not my space. To a point that I got myself attached so close to Mokazi because that was the only friend I had. And Mokazi was getting bored now and started telling me, you have to look for friends. You don't need to always be close to me. You say you go for a, in a, okay, you go for a party. 
there are so many other women there you can talk with, you can chat with, but because I don't have that confidence, my self-esteem was already low. I just always wanted to be with Mokazi. Sometimes I would even tell him I want to go to the toilet. Why don't you take me? You know, now I started bringing that girl thing to him of we go to the toilet together. When he goes to the kitchen, I'm with him. When he sits somewhere, I'll sit there and not leave because now this time I have no one else to, to be with. I felt I'm just alone in this world. I think I got depressed. Not that I think I got depressed. People are calling me slay queens. No, people started telling me things. Oh, Pauline, you're slaying. You just got married you, and you're slaying here. Why don't you give your husband a kid or he's going to leave you? So many people told me so many things. Then so many people started now trying to make Mokazi focus on them. You see, so many women started now looking for him. Like I felt, oh, so even women have started even looking for him so that Mokazi can at least get off me and start focusing on other women. So for me, I would, I would tell him, you know what, babe, because I can't get a baby. If you get a chance of having a baby outside, bring it, I'll take care. I'm, like, I'm done, done. I'll take care of your kids now. I'm like, even if you get a kid outside, I'm ready. If you feel that you're tired with me, you don't want to have me anymore, like you don't want to do anything with me, just use protection so that you don't become sick. Not to a point now we started having sad conversations with my mom and my sister, and my mom was like, oh, no, you're not pregnant. And my family, everyone has three kids. You're the only person who is left out. You don't have a kid. What do we do? My sister was ready to carry for me a baby. And I've never told Mokazi that, but my sister was so ready for me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I don't care. I will do it for you, sis. Don't worry. So I would try to come and talk to Mokazi and tell him. And Mokazi is like, you know what, babe? You're not patient. You're not... You know, he starts scolding me, you know, not in form of scolding, but making me feel like, you're going too far, too far. Just calm down, things will be okay. And now I keep quiet. I'm like, oh, you don't know. One day I'll just come and tell you I'm tired and this is what we have to do. But now with his strictness, sometimes when you try to talk to him, something he's like blocking you. You don't have to say anything bad about yourself. You need to be you. Why do you want to compare yourself with others? So I felt bad. I, I truly felt bad. And now... People would make fun of me. I don't not take it serious now because I'm used to that. People making fun of me. Mokazi is like, he's not telling me anything. He's just kept, he's quiet. So I told him one day, you know what, babe? We're going to do, an, we're going to adopt a baby. So that's where Ashoka came. When I told him I have to adopt a baby, Mokazi was like, okay, fine, we will. But for him, he was not in for it. He just said yes so that to make me have peace with myself and now when I told him no we have to start looking for papers we need to know we have to have information on what to bring and what to have by the time you adopt the baby and Mokazi I remember that day it was very early in the morning and he told me you know what babe you don't have to go far to look for kids just adopt my babies my kids are there just adopt them and I'm like these are your kids I can't adopt them I can take care of them they can stay with me but I can't adopt them I, I need a kid a very small baby that won't know their dad and won't know their mom, but knows us as a parent. Mokazi told me, don't go that way. Just adopt these kids first. Let's take care of them. And as we move on, we're going to get our own, our own kid. Going back to the guy now who did like a surgical operation on her, there's one thing he said. He gave us an example of someone who tried our way, went for surgical, went for IUI, went for IVF, not once. Not twice, three times, IVF. IVF is very expensive. So kept on going different countries until these people gave up. They come back here and they're like, it's like we are, we are never meant to have children, so let's relax. They relaxed. It didn't take them three months. They didn't go to the hospital. They stopped everything. They got pregnant. So even the doctors, so the doctor was telling us even themselves, they don't understand some things. Yeah, they've tried everything else, but so I was like, God's time. What if we, we have already spent so much, more than a million for all this? More than a million for all this. So I was like, we might spend so much, but come back to the same, same results. So let's just relax and. Yeah. Yeah. So we relaxed. Many years passed. How many years? <laughs> nine years, more than and nine years, close to ten years of waiting 
all of a sudden, me and at work, she sends me, okay, she sends me, uh, you know this uh, pregnancy test? So she sends me, I'm like, whose who's is it? Oh, the pregnancy kit. No, you didn't ask me who is it. I was just <laughs> sleeping. Okay, um, I was getting tired and would sleep a lot. At night, it would be on like until morning. When he leaves the house at 3.30, that's when our sleep comes in. And I'd notice I had a schedule. So I, had a, I have a friend of mine, she would tell me, you look so pregnant, you look so like, you look so beaten up, you look everything. And I'm like, for the so years I've been looking for that baby. Why are you telling me I'm pregnant? This thing can never happen, you know? And I'm like, stop saying that. I'm like, yeah, it can never happen. I will never get pregnant and I'll never be pregnant. So let me just lay and be where I am. And then she pushes me to have that test done. So I had a kid because, you see the way, no, I noticed the plan, the, the, what do you call it? I noticed the pattern of how my periods come. Sometimes it should skip a week, sometimes days. And now having that, and now my, my period have skipped like three, four days. I'm like, wow. So I would go buy a kit and test. And the day I've bought, immediately I've bought the kit. Coming back to the house, my period start. So those are frustration. Another time I tried to go for checkup. The next day my periods come. Everything is negative. So I thought, why this time should I try? So I just ignored the idea of testing myself to see if I'm pregnant. So when my my friend pushed me and told me, Pauline, you look pregnant. You look pregnant. You look so she kept telling me that for a week. And then I told her, Do you know what? I didn't have my periods. I think I'm pregnant. She told me, I told you, even the way you look so like beaten up, you look like a, a cow in the village, you know. Just go and check. So I said, Okay. So I have a kid somewhere. And I said, let me test. So I did what is supposed to be done, and I left. I went to a shower, came, took my breakfast, and now I waited. Then I forgot about the test completely. Stayed here, did some watching and everything. Then later, oh, I had a test somewhere. Going for me to check, it's a positive. I'm like, I don't know how to express myself. Should I be happy? Should I jump? Should I cry? Should I be everywhere? Should I scream? And the first person I had to call was my house girl. I told her, look. And she was, what is this, mama? And I, until my mind came back, like, why am I even showing my house help? This thing, I'm like, I should be telling Mwakazi, not my house help. So I called my friend and I told her, I called her on a video call. I told her, Steve, I showed her the, the strip, it was pregnant. I told you you're pregnant. She was happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you going to tell Mwakazi about it? I'm like, no, I'm not telling Mwakazi anything. I'll just keep it until the day will feel is good for me to tell him. And then I called my sister and I told her, oh, you know, I did a test and it came like this and like, oh, thank you. You, you, you should be so happy. Don't tell anyone, even Mokazi, don't tell him. Just take your time. And then later, you maybe after some times, if your periods don't show up, then you will, you will tell him. Because sometimes you can think you're pregnant and the test becomes positive and there is nothing, you know. But because of how much I think about Mokazi in a whole day, I can't keep my mouth shut. So at around five, when people, the next day was the election, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So at around five, I texted Mokazi, hi, babe. Mokazi was like, hi, can I tell you something? And he's like, you know, I hate that. You tell me what you have to tell me. Okay. Promise me you're not going to be mad at me. Mm -hmm. And Mokazi was like, babe, are you telling me or not? I'm like, okay, fine. So I took the picture and sent it to him. Mokazi was like, who's and what is this? I'm like, babe. Whose COVID results are those? I'm like, COVID again. I told him, it's mine. Mokazi asked me, what is it? I told him, I'm pregnant. Mokazi never wrote back. Mokazi went mute on me. He said nothing. And I'm like, oh my God. The moment I was waiting for, I thought Mokazi would be so happy, he would be so excited. Nothing. I think it's a matter of not knowing how to react. So you like compose yourself, breathe in, breathe out. You're like, uh -huh, for how many years have we been trying? Close to 10. Um, okay, I have kids, but to a point, someone mentioned to me, or oh, maybe your eggs finished. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like, should I ask her, whose pregnancy is that? <laughs> or should I? So I was like, just there. So I decided, let me just relax. The same way I have waited, I have relaxed. Let me just relax. Mm -hmm.
and I came home, I didn't show any reaction. So Makazi coming home, he's pretending he's not happy. So we had we had organized a dinner on with three families, and we were we were having a barbecue. We were doing barbecue and having celebration. Of course, not because of me, because tomorrow was election and no one was going to work. So we just sit there and I see Mokazi, I call him Papa. So I see Papa coming in bags and he's walking. He's like, the first thing he hugged me, like, hi, babe. I'm like, oh, okay. So he hugs me, he says hi to the rest. He comes in, puts the papers, the, the bags down with the shopping and then he goes to the bedroom. So like, I pretend I'm going to the washroom. Immediately he comes. I'm like, five minutes later, I go to the bedroom. I'm like, hi, babe, how was your day? You had a good day? And Mokazi tells me, now you know. Even he's not even telling me, oh baby, I'm excited, how are you feeling? Nothing. He's like, now you know, we need to go to the, we have to wait for three days. And then go to the gate on Wednesday and check if it's so there. Sure. I don't want to be excited and then there is nothing. And I'm like, okay, for even you can't hug me. And he's like, babe, stop that. I'm like, okay. Even didn't go to the toilet, I went back and sat there. No, even I got irritated no, because now I'm, I know I'm pregnant, not even the the sicknesses started coming in, everything started, I don't want chicken, I don't want to feel the smell of this, I don't want this, I don't want this. And now Mokazi was like, you have to be strong. If you need to carry that healthy pregnancy, you need to be strong. And as I've always told you, if you give me a 1kg baby, we're not talking. So ever since then I got pregnant, I've been conscious with myself, what I eat, how I walk, what I do. Mokazi has, Mokazi has always been on my case, everything, all the time. So the good thing, he used to take me for the clinics. He supported me in that. Uh, we did everything together. The pregnancy journey to me was delicate, number one, because I wanted to really take care of her, right from what she's eating. Having gone to, through her endometriosis journey, I didn't want to risk because I don't, want, I don't know what to expect. So I kept on pushing her to do the right thing, like exercise by walking. We used to even to do swimming. So I used to pay a coach for her to teach her how to swim. So she used to swim on Wednesday or Saturday, and on Sunday, all of us as a family, we go for swimming. So at least she can stay active. Her eating was okay. I already sorted her because I really wanted now her to have her dream baby. So every checkup with her i never missed any yeah so every checkup we are together like it's a journey that we are walking together and i have to be supportive to her having gone through what we have gone through then now it got to a point it's it was now 32 weeks yeah so 32 weeks we are anticipating now we kept on like gauging this baby will be born around april that's the birthday of my, my dad's birthday. And because I had purpose to call him my dad. So that was coinciding so well. So I was like, you know, the way you are hoping it reaches that point. Whereby it coincides with my dad's birthday. So at least I think it will be a bit more meaningful to me. Now, unfortunately, one morning when I wake up very early. So one morning when I, I wake up like around 3 a.m. So I wake up and she's already awake. Constantly, I think that one disturbed me a lot because you're constantly in the bathroom and back, bathroom and back. So I was like, what is it? So Mukazi doesn't like me on phone at night because I can stay the whole day online, even at night until morning online. So Mukazi was, why don't you put your phone off and try sleep? I'm like, I can't sleep. Force yourself to sleep. I'm like, okay, fine, I just put the phone off, just go to the toilet, come back, then go back to the toilet and come back. Now it became, it's like now something that is happening, I'm doing, I'm just up and down, up and down to the toilet. Once I go to the toilet, there is this flow that is coming out and then once I'm done, it goes. Then I went back. No, doing that so many times, I would go and change. By the time I get to the toilet, I've already peed on myself. No, even I started now because now I can't wash again. How can I even start washing my inner wear? I'm washing this, then go back another after two seconds. I'm washing another one. I got tired. So I decided, let me pile them somewhere in a bucket. I'll wash them in the morning. It got to a point, all my inner wears that were fitting me, they're over. So I jumped to his boxers. I would wear his box, I'd put it down. Wait, put it. And then Mokaz was like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you sleep? I'm like, Papa, I 
peed like in bed i'm like no but i don't know understand what's going on and he was like try relax go pee then come back and sleep i just went but before i got went to the door it came out i told him you see it just came out so you don't have to bring me you sleep or you go to work if you're going leave me i'll be okay and mokaz was i don't want to leave this house and then later i'm called oh something happened to you so i want to be sure call the gainer so i had to call the gainer at 2 a.m and explain to him what's happening so the gainer told me oh that's what's happening oh that is prom and i'm like no what this needs again so we need to meet at the clinic at 8 so let's meet there at 8 i'm like okay fine so i had to pack everything dress up and then we left with him so we went first to a client he attended to his clients first and then by 7:30 we were at the clinic now waiting for the doctor to come by then everything is coming the water is still coming out and i don't know what to do people are there they are waiting at the queue and i'm like oh my god i'm going to embarrass myself so it's now we started hunting for the cotton wool i'm the telling you cuz you go to this clinic this chemist and me go this side and then we start looking even if you get her pad we'll use but now at that time no shop was open to buy around 7:30 at 7:30 in that building no shop was open no chemist was open so i was like what do we do so a certain lady came and i was like why don't you give me this cotton i use because you don't know the price and i'm still around when the sales person come you will ask what how much it is and then i'll pay so we were given the cotton i went cleaned myself up and i was not comfortable waiting for the doctor to come so when the doctor came uh we realized the water had broke broken so the water had broken what normally they do is because this is now preterm before term so they normally inject her with some medicine to help the baby's lung develop because by this time the baby's lungs are not developed so she was given the injection the second injection was now to delay to slow down her labor pain, labor pain so that she doesn't go on labor before the baby's lung develop did that happen no immediately that is done the two injections are done water got there finished there was no water in me there was yeah. no water yeah. so until to a point now the baby was not moving again anymore in the time so it became uh serious the doctor immediately told us to go book ourselves in at the hospital the good thing is we had shopped for a hospital and it was a hospital that is near where our doctors normally operate so that it's easy for him to to come so we went ourselves booked ourselves into the hospital and yeah check 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 she has to be admitted so immediately the surgeon has to be called uh because this baby is under duress a newborn specialist has to be called of course uh, the anesthesia also has to be called so all of them converges there and it's time for her now to be taken in of course me I was constantly making my prayers that she is fine and the baby is fine because you see here we are risking we are, we are like hoping that the baby is fine and she's fine yeah and that's why I, I think we 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 managed to get the best we had the best surgeon the best anesthesia the best uh, newborn specialist then the baby came out so it's 5:45 my baby is here i'm so happy but this time i'm so confused i don't know to be happy i don't know i'm like oh the baby is cute but inside me i was so confused i don't know how to express my joy of the baby because it was my first time and i'm like i'm so happy so we we, we started chatting with the gainer and he's telling me no you know after this you just go stay like few days then get another pregnancy we get pregnant again we meet in december and we are chatting chatting And now I thought it would be so easy for us now the baby is out only for me to understand that we have to stay Yeah because the baby now came and it was unexpected so the yeah. baby had to be in a NICU NICU we had yeah. to take the baby in the like new... newborn ICU Yeah so the baby was taken there for the lungs and everything and then the jaundice was there so I stayed in that hospital for so long until I forgot even I have a home So the hospital became my home and I had to shift the room because the hospital where I was admitted they don't have the like the women wards for maternity and everything. They either have a double room where you share you share two people or a private room or a VIP room. So I had to shift from a double shared room to a private room where I'll stay alone 
and I stayed there for 21 good days. Now, this is when you start going back and forth. You go to the nursery. You don't sleep with your baby. You have to wake up early, go see the baby, then go back and again nurse the baby. Now, the challenge I had is my baby was not feeding because the he had the nervous the, the nerves the senses were the senses zero was zero was, yeah. so my baby can't yeah. breastfeed no we have yeah. to use the syringe to give the baby some milk or the pipes so that made me feel so frustrated she used to cry i used actually. to cry every time and that's when i came to know postpartum depression is real because i would cry sometimes i would even tell mokazi why don't you take over come and breastfeed the baby because i'm tired mm-hmm. and mokazi is like you're tired he would also get mad at me and then I would start crying. But I didn't know. The more I cry or the more I show I'm remorseful to the baby, the, the more the more nurses. The milk is even not. The milk is not coming and the nurses are saying, oh, this young girl, she can't take care of the baby. Mm. We need to keep her more until the day she will learn to, to keep the baby. Mm-hmm. So we stayed there for 21 days. And we had to uh, get help from uh, occupation therapy. Yeah. So this guy used to come like almost daily. Of course, at a fee, yeah? so almost daily to make sure they, there's a way they deal with the baby, to make sure the senses are, you know, are like awake. Because once you touch like this, the baby has to sense and try to turn to suck. Eventually, the baby now started responding, responding, responding. So she could take the 20 or 40 ml. 40 ml. 40 ml, then 40 ml. Then now the doctor was like, until we are sure, that the baby has gotten the response. Now the baby can suck properly. So at least now if she goes home, she's able to take care of this baby. There's no need you go home then tomorrow you are back to the hospital. So we stayed there for long. Yeah. But the good thing is we we thank God we have a very supportive family. They were like, you stay there as long as don't care about the bills. We are going to sort things out. You know, to a point, I was walking around with my logbook just in case anything happens. I tell them, guys, eh, I've got a backup here. <laughs> anyway, so we didn't get to use that. We thank God. And after 21 days in hospital, we came back with the baby at home. Yes. So a baby who was born at 2 kgs dropped to 1.7. 1.7. And then we tried so much. And the baby, in the 21 days, the baby gained only 1 kg. Mm-hmm. Not even 1 one then dropped a thousand so we, grams we really? left we left hospital and he, the baby was 1.8 1.8 no but there was progress at <clears> least <throat> yeah. he was daily gaining some kilos that's mm-hmm. how we were allowed plus the nurses there were constantly monitoring her how she's taking care of the child because there's no need to release her and she can't take care of she needed to know like how to bath the baby how to do she was taken through all that and yeah we so we home. came home and the baby is too small so you know, we had to copy what was there so we had to buy all the heaters the same thing that the baby used to use in the, the hospital the icu so we got everything and now the baby is so healthy at 5.6 in two months now i feel more contented even if someone now calls me mama so and so mama johnson i'm like oh for real now my mom and i'm like i don't care how my body looks right now all I feel is I feel I'm a mother. So I think he's happy now. He has a yes. mini him who resembles him. Yeah, and to me, you know, getting like my dad is something meaningful. And I think the journey we've gone through, that's why I decided let me call him my father. It means a lot. We are more closer. And yeah, I decided not to pressure her because you see, like now the doctor was suggesting we get pregnant again so that we go there December. You see, this, this is your first baby. You need to bond. You need to come to term to, you know, because everybody had ruled you out. You never have kids. Oh, the ex has done A, B, C, D. This and this has been done, so you'll never have children of your own. Here you are with your child, so I'm not giving you pressure for the second one. Again, God's time. And we are not alone because you had, she had joined groups, women groups, endo warriors, eh? those endometriosis groups. She had joined, so they kept on encouraging each other. And to me, I think the message out there is God's time is the best. 
you might spend so much, do everything. But now I think God comes back and reminds you that he's the one in charge. No matter what you do, I think I, should, I, I if I saved the money you spent, by now we'd be having a, like our dream house. Eh? Yes. No, if we decided to wait on God. Yeah. Yeah. Never be quick to judge someone because you truly don't know what they're going through. The fact that people never understood why I'm not getting pregnant, they never knew my journey. Even if, even if. You try, the much you try to explain to someone or to people the reason you're not getting pregnant, at the end of the day, they don't care. You need to do something to get pregnant. So I've seen so many friends of mine who are not pregnant, and now I can't even ask them, why are you not getting pregnant? Because now I understand the challenge. So I've learned that I should learn to understand more. And in fact, I decided I'll come out there and tell people about my story. I'm never shy to say about the plant sex thing. I've never, I'm never shy to tell people about the chunk of me that was coming off me because of endometriosis. I'm never shy to say, like, even in front of my parents, my dad, I'm never shy to tell them that this happened. So if you see this happening to you, why don't you seek for medical attention? If you're capable of getting pregnant, if you know you, yourself well, and you're capable of getting pregnant at your early ages, please do it, you see? Because this thing called endometriosis is not a joke. And if you don't have finances to go for treatment, at the end of the day, it will kill you. Say the, the example of Njambi. Njambi has endometriosis. How long has she been in the U.S.? In those machines fighting endometriosis. Very, very long time. So for me, I said, I'm praying to God, I'm not going to get to that point. In fact, before I came to know I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant, I thought the endo has come back because I'd gone for a checkup and we were told we have some few uh, fibroids. Mm. So I knew the fibroids are coming back and now the endometriosis will come back. And now that it had started eating my stomach, my ovaries, my fallopian tube, I was so scared if it comes back now again, this is 10 years past, it will eat everything. So I was so scared and I had that fear in me. And I was telling Mokazi, Papa, I don't think I'll ever do a surgery again. If this endometriosis decide to come, what you're going to do is... Getting pregnant is done. We don't think about it. It's just we go, we remove it, and we close the, the tubes. Because I don't want to be active. And at the end of the day, I have this nursing, this endometriosis thing. But once noticed on time, it is treatable, and you can get pregnant. And now people are here telling me, Oh, Pauline, you got a baby. I know you're going to mistreat all the other kids. I'm like, no. They called me, mom. They gave me the name that I never had. They made me learn so many things, how to handle kids, how to be with kids, even if sometimes you crash with them, you know, we are different. Huh? So I need to be there like a mother. So I have to be a mother. I don't have to mistreat those kids. So having them for almost, I got them when they're three years, mm -hmm. and now they're 13 and 11, almost 10 years. And my baby is small. I have this three old month baby in the house. The love that you, I'm so happy now to see that bond them calling their brother for a mom it means a lot so i'm so happy for the bond you can't differentiate who is who who is whose mother who is who's whatever they all call me mom they're happy i'm happy so for me i'm happy and now i'm happy with a full family now right now i can't feel stressed that mokazi is not giving me stress to have kids you know us deciding to come with another kid as mokazi has said let's nature take its course I don't know what will happen, but for now, I'm con even if he says no more kids, I'm just contented. I think it's always important to question why you're in that marriage first. Are we here because of the children? If when I was meeting her for the first time, I was not even... Kids were never like in our mind, right? No. Kids were not in our mind. So for me, I was looking for companionship, which I got. So, even if there's that pressure of now, now you are together, you want children, it's always good to remind yourself, what were you looking for? Because they are not vessels that, childbearing uh, instruments. They are human beings with emotions, with feelings. What about them? What are they going through? So, why did I engage them in the first place? So, if I ask myself those questions, 
I'll zero down to let make her feel happy, comfortable, without pressure of having a child. Yes, I know it's what is expected. And unfortunately, the pressure does not come from the man. The pressure comes from the third party. And more, sorry to say, in our African contemporary society, it's the parents who give pressure. She'll go to her mom, not yet, not yet. When? Why? Uh, you know, and for the man, you, so many theories will come up. Oh, your woman is not giving birth. She must have uh, done like so many abortions. That's why she's not getting pregnant. You need to check her past. You know, men will also try to be philosophical. Like, uh, you need to check her past. Her past matters a lot. Yeah, to me, like, here we, we, we met together uh, from the first day. It's strange because, you know, when, when, when a lady spends in your house the first day, you'll be like, she's so loose. Men will think she's so loose. But to me, I knew what I wanted. And despite the fact that it's the first time I'm meeting her face to face, I knew this is the right woman for me. So to me, that was primary reason. So to any man out there, you're feeling the pressure that the peer pressures and the friends are telling you, no, you have to look for another woman who can give you children. Ask yourself, why did you look for this woman in the first place? Was it for children? Yes, they, we are meant to do the procreation, but it's not like her wish. Like for my case, she really wanted the child. And every, every month she used to cry. Reason being, every time she sees her period, she's depressed because that's a confirmation she's not pregnant. Every time her period could delay for a week, the notion of her being pregnant was not the first. What she was now thinking first was, it's because of the endometriosis. That's why my, I'm having irregular periods. So the notion of being pregnant was not in her mind. Until now it went, I think, the second week. By the time you are discovering you're pregnant, was how many days, how many weeks? It was already two weeks. Two weeks already. We had to give it another one week or two before now we went to confirm with the doctor. You know, and there's no better words than, you know, those doctors tell you you have a single fetus in the uterus. That's, you know, the best moment for a man. Okay, it could be two fetus in the uterus, but we are happy with single fetus in the uterus. What I learned is telling God what you, ha what you want to have. You see, like me telling God, I want to be that Hebrew woman. And it, it came to pass. Because by the time I was having all this, my amniotic fluid is over. That pain of labor pains I've never felt. So I'm a Hebrew woman, to be honest, because I never felt labor pains. I never felt any, anything at all. It was just like I've been given a baby. You just have this, you know. So trusting in God also is one key thing that we should do. And you know, God does not subject you to something that he can never sort it out for you. In fact, God normally gives you three answers. Yeah? Number one will be a no, for a reason that God will not like tell you now why. The second answer is a yes. And the third answer, wait. So maybe the longer you have waited to have your baby, is God telling you wait. So you are actually on God's waiting room for your time to come. So sometimes we get tired to be in that waiting room. We want, you know, it's, this is a microwave generation. So we, we are tired of waiting. I want a child this month. It has to happen. Yeah? And unfortunately, those people who don't want kids, the they don't get... even struggle. Yeah. And people who are dying to have one. So I think it's also good to be listening to, to God, like you have said. The three answers, it's a yes, it's a no. You wait for the reason maybe much later. Or wait. And I think coming to this far we've come, 
there are so many reasons we can actually you see i think god was trying to also to fortify you like be ready to be a mother because maybe he knew it was it's, it's not the right time mentally physically maybe it was not the right time yeah. this was the right time for you so to everyone else it's always important to like we've spent so much but we didn't know now we know god's time is the best and sometimes they always say about the 11th hour this is our almost 10th year yeah. of waiting i could have given up on the first month but for the men out there as well support your women they need you more this is not the time to crush their spirit like oh i knew it people are telling me you know you messed your life up left right and center that's not the gospel that actually we can pass across just support them yeah Pauline and Mwakazi stand as a testament of the extraordinary power of love resilience and unwavering faith theirs is a tale of enduring love indomitable spirit and the unyielding pursuit of a dream against all odds through their journey they have become an inspiration to many reminding us all that even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges there is hope thank you so much for watching if you have an inspiring story that you'd like to share with us kindly reach out to me through the contact details provided also check out our video library for any inspiring videos you might have missed in the past and while at it hit the subscribe button and you will be the first to know every time i post a new video now Let's head over to the comments section and interact some more.